Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to do variable data directly in Acrobat Pro. In front of me, I have a folder with a couple different PDFs. I have this data source that we're going to be using, and we're also going to be using a JavaScript later to um, automate this whole process. I also have a subfolder here called Save PDFs, which we are going to use to export all of our data sets into newly created PDF files. So jumping right in, I have a, a PDF here for a membership form for a fitness club or gym. And essentially what we want to do is we want to import data into these areas, the, these areas here in the gray, including a checkbox here down at the bottom for a membership type. The way that we're going to be doing that is with a fillable form so I've already created this in a separate PDF and I have this one here called this fillable I've already created all of these forms using the um, tools and to prepare form and as you can see here all of these uh, fields have a name including this radio button down here at the bottom for the membership type if I open this up, you can see it says uh, membership and there's an option for regular gold or platinum. And this is a radio button so that only one of those three options is selectable at any given time. I cannot select, you know, three different options or two options. I can only select one at a time. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how I created that. If you want to see a more detailed video on how to create forms in Acrobat, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. And I'll consider, in, consider doing a more full, you know, in-depth video in the future. So now I have all of my field names here. And these are going to correspond directly to the field names that I have in my data set. So I'm going to go here to my data set. I'm using uh, Google Sheets for this. You can use Microsoft Excel. But all of these uh, field names here are corresponding to our header rows in our data set. And as you can see here for this last one, this is for the radio button. So my uh, the name of my uh, field name here is uh, membership. And then each individual record is either set to regular gold or platinum. And that corresponds exactly to how I have it set up here in my PDF file. So once I have my data all ready to go, we're going to export this out. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to hit Download. And this has to be done as a TXT file. So if you're using Microsoft Excel, it's very easy, easy to just do a, um, a tab delimited or tab separated uh, text file, which comes out as a TXT file. If you're using Google Sheets, you have to use a tab separated value. And then we're going to change the extension name on this. So I'm going to download that real quick. I'm going to go back to my desktop where my file has been downloaded. And I'm going to go to data.txt and I'm going to delete the original extension file. I'll hit enter and it's going to prompt me with a warning here. I do want to use the txt file extension and this is now ready to go. I already have my data source here so I don't really need this but um, that's how you do it. You have to use a txt file. Unlike Adobe InDesign with data merge you can use either a txt file or a csv file. In this particular instance, you have to use a TXT file. Won't work with a, um, a CSV file. So my data source is ready to go. I have it saved on my computer. I'm going to go back into Acrobat here, and still in the prepare form uh, tool area, I'm going to go right here where it says more. I'm going to go down to import data, and I'm going to uh, change this uh, show options to all files so that I can select my TXT file. And I'm going to hit select. And when I do that, it's going to bring up all of the records from my data source. And so let's just go ahead and let's select this one right here. And I'll click OK. And when I do that, it's going to import all of the data correctly in all of the different fields, including the checkbox here. I'll click preview so you can see it. And you can see here this gold option has been selected for our, um, our form. Now this is great if you only have to do one or a couple. You can just go back and I'll go back to edit here and I can just go to more, import data and I can do the same thing over again and I can select a different uh, part of the data source here. Um, so this is for Darren O'Shea. 
again, if it's a couple, easy, no problem. But let's just say hypothetically you need to do this for like 500 records. There is a way to automate this whole process so you don't have to go through one by one. Uh, first things first here, I'm going to go to clear my form data. So I hit more clear form. So I have a blank form to begin with here. I'm going to close this out. And the way that we're going to do this with automation is a action uh, wizard and a JavaScript. And so I'm going to go back to my tools. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here where it says action wizard. And now I have my list of actions on the right hand side. I've already created this, but we're going to go ahead and do this from scratch so that uh, I can show you the, the uh, step by step process. So I'm going to go up here at the top to new action. I'm going to come down here to more tools and I'm going to select execute JavaScript and I'm going to push that over to the right hand side. I don't need to prompt the user. I'm going to double click on my uh, settings here. And as you can see, the JavaScript editor comes up and it's completely blank. Back in my finder, I have my JavaScript source right here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click with this on a Mac and I'm going to use the uh, text editor. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of this information. Let me make sure I have it all here. Select all. There we go. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here back in my JavaScript editor. Now, real quick, before I customize this to what we're going to be using, this was not created by me. This was created by this gentleman right here, Carl Heinz Kramer. I'll leave a link down in the description of the video to the site here. So if you want to go ahead and you want to leave him a nice little tip for creating this, especially if you're going to be using this all the time, uh, all these creators work hard to uh, make things easier for everybody out there. So I'm sure he would appreciate it if you go ahead and uh, you know leave a little tip for him as an appreciation for creating this. So anyway, anyway, back in my JavaScript editor, we're going to need to make a couple changes to the actual JavaScript to reference the file that we're going to be using for our data and then where we're going to be outputting our PDF files. So this first area here, you can see it says the tab delimited text file containing the data. So I've named mine the same as it is right here, this data.txt. Actually, I think I have mine as a capital D. Um, but here is where we need to link it to the actual reference point on our hard drive. So on a Mac, the way to do that is to right click on the actual file and hit get info. And right here where it says where, you're going to go ahead and you're going to copy that information. I'm going to go back to Acrobat and I'm going to paste it in right here. And as you can see here, this is the link to my hard drive. I need to make sure to put a, a slash there. And I need to do the same thing right here below that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this here by pasting it in. And this is where I need to pull the information from the folder, the subfolder that I made here. So this saved PDFs. So I'm just going to type that in saved PDFs. And you'll see there's a note here that says, make sure this ends with a slash. So I've done that here. So this is the reference to where my data source is, and this is the reference to where my subfolder is, where we're going to export all of the PDFs. The last thing here, and this is op this is uh, optional, you can uh, delete this here to just leave the um, essentially just leave the uh, names of each of the PDFs static. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to link it to the data set so that I get a file name just like I have here, first name and last name. So in this case, you need to make sure to link it to the header row of your data source. So mine's first name and last name. I'm gonna come back into Acrobat here and I'm gonna change this text one to first name and this other one here to last name. And I'll also add this underscore in between first and last name and then this part here I would suggest just leaving as is because this is going to give it the PDF extension. Now that I have everything set up, my data source, my output and how I want the file to be saved, I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click save and it's going to prompt me to save it as a name so I'm just going to call this uh, batch fill. I'll hit save. 
And now here under my action list on the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and click this. Since we have the form open already, it's not going to prompt you. I can just go ahead and hit start. And you can see very quickly it's gone ahead and it's filled out this information. Now you can see here this is just a one page PDF file. This has all the information pulled from this particular record from the data set. But if I go back into my finder window, you can see here there are 10 records in total now that have showed up in this saved PDF subfolder. So if I just click on another one here, you can see this one for Glenn Simpson. This has been filled out, including the radio button here down at the bottom. So now these are uh, completed. These are ready to either print or you can save them out to your hard drive somewhere for reference for later, whatever the case is. But it's ran through all of the records in our um, uh, data set. For this, it was only 10 records, but maybe your data set is much larger. And so that's it. We're basically done. Um, it's obviously works uh, much faster to automate the whole process instead of going one by one. Um, there is some limitations to doing something like this. You cannot use photos or link a, another PDF, for example, like you could with a data merge in Adobe um, InDesign. Um, but if you just are doing this with form data, I'm sure it's probably just going to be text files that you're going to be dealing with. So this works very well for going through a lot of um, uh, variable data without having to use another f um, program like Photoshop or Illustrator or, or uh, Data Merge and InDesign. So I hope that helps out somebody. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the, uh, in the comment section below. I am going to leave a link to download all of these files on my Patreon page. Uh, I normally set it up so that you, ha if you are a paid Patreon member, you'll get it for free. Otherwise, you can buy each one of these. For this particular case, I'm just going to go ahead and set this up um, as a free item. You will have to be a free member of the Patreon page. Um, there is that option for you, so please check it out below. Um, but if you want to go ahead and download these files to use as a reference to create your own or to play around with to see if it'll work for you, I'll leave that as a option for folks. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like this uh, content. Um, if you have not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. I'm going to try to post uh, content more and more regularly, so um, I'm sure it'll be beneficial, especially to those folks that work in pre-press or that deal with a lot of different graphic design uh, stuff like this in the future. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate it very much, and until the next time, take it easy.